is how we ride. This is how we do. Is from 2017. This is on my page, the Chaz, who, at, which at the time was named Dirt Track State of Mind. I do believe at the bottom right of this screen right now, you will actually still see the Dirt Track State of Mind logo that I started all this on. This was my first video ever uh, to be posted. And on this first video ever, uh, it, we went 79K on the views, 100 some odd comments. And in this uh, video where, I, where I'm definitely looking way better than I am now. Jeez, look at that guy. Tanned up everything. In this video, I had already completed several years of track interminglings and, and promotion of events and promotion of concerts and organizing and managing businesses and helping manage businesses and, and managing subquarterlets and all this stuff while being uh announcer guy commercial maker dude dealing with abc fox trying to get mainstream media in dallas texas there in the dallas texas area and unfortunately or fortunately i have come to the conclusion and in this video i literally state how you just think these dirt track people are just a bunch of rednecks driving in circles and i feel like i have been battling that image because that image let me tell you something ladies and gentlemen you may, oh, it's just bad, it's all this, it's that, it's the other. At the end of the day, I'm not saying what I believe it is. I'm not saying what I think it is. I'm telling you what the businessmen of this world are saying about us behind our backs. And I'm telling you what I've been told to my face when I've went to thousands of offices in person with the right materials, the right pitches, the right explanation, the right enthusiasms. And at the end of the day... This sport don't have no respect from the business sector of the world. And that's the biggest problem with this sport in getting sponsors and fans. So we've been working on this stereotype, uh, fighting the stereotype, in my opinion, for several years now. And maybe some people ain't addressed it. Some people have, but some people ain't addressing it. Even me right there, I just said ain't, right? That's the wrong way to say it. Although I don't care about that. It's like I said, it's not something that I believe because I know in this racing world that it ain't just a bunch of rednecks driving in circles. I know that just because you got an accent, you ain't a dumbass. I know just because of this or that or whatever the image may look like, I know that there's a lot of smart engineers in this business. I know that there's a lot of very intelligent people working on these cars and built businesses to even be able to afford to race. There's a lot of smart people in this, in this racing industry and fans. But unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, I think the smart people are slowly becoming, except me, the silent majority. And you could almost say that about the country because the only voices you hear are the voices that are loud. And it seems like the decent people are not as loud as the ones who want to cause, as they say historically, ruckus. Now, I am traditionally known for starting ruckus. This video right here, very controversial video. First video out, I'm dogging NASCAR. I'm talking about how great we are and all this stuff. You know, we ain't just a bunch of rednecks in circles. But that perspective, this attitude is coming from Seeing what the real world views when they view us. And that view, that misinterpretation, that ill, incorrect assumption of what this dirt track racing world is, is what is costing us the ability to grow. Hell yeah. The, the number one promoter of Stone Cold was Triple H, the enemy. The number one promoter of Hillary was Trump. Yep. The number one promoter of Biden was the deep state. No, I'm just playing. Uh, anyway. The number one promoter of uh, Cards and Charlie is the Chad. I did not say this. I think Flow Racing is the number one promoter. I think we got a call here. Hold on. Let's see if we can. Uh... Hello. Hello. Oh, my hello. God. We have the man. How long has Charging been your nickname? That's what I would like to know. Oh, man. Uh, about, well, 
seven, eight years. Seven years. So how how long have you been racing? Next year will be my tenth year in automobile. Okay. Okay, well, I just wanted to put your, your picture in here now. We got a little picture of you in here, hopefully. Is that okay? Stay here. This, this, this is your biggest problem with me. See that car right there? That's not the same car, right, Chaz? It, 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 it's the only car I could click from your Facebook. What do you want? Which car do you want? Is there a new car you got no. here? What? What? You're worried about marketing now. Which car do you want? The car we had. The car we had. The black a, one? Just, uh, car, the black one. That, that 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 was hardly even our car. We bought that car for forty five hundred dollars. That's a very good deal. And now you know why I was not so upset when I got out the car after I flipped. It. I understand you not, you weren't upset. Very and I also understand that a lot of people found it very entertaining. And I also admitted that a part of me finds it very entertaining, but another part of me knows what people take shit as. And gets me upset because I've been battling this image shit situation. And it's not necessarily an image of an of a, of a accent or anything, but it's more so a projection of professionalism and badass drivers. You know, I, I, I hate, I would hate for the projection of the dirt track racing and cars to be the reality. You know, or for that to, to get any kind of legs. You know, so I know you the joking and the thing. It's getting, it's it's fun, and I know nope. I know nope. that it's entertaining. It's not a joke. This, this is not a joke. This, this is my life. This, this is exactly what I do every day of the week. I wake up thinking about racing, go to sleep thinking about racing, eat thinking about racing. I do everything thinking about racing. So this is not a joke. This okay. is my lifestyle, and this was my pretty much only opportunity out of that weekend that I could have got my name put out there and let everybody know who I was and I did exactly that okay sorry trying to get your car up there I hear what you're saying so you're saying at the end of the, at the end of the day this is the correct one right yeah that's what I wreck that's a pretty okay. good looking fellow on the blue eye now, that's what they keep telling me that's what they keep telling me but did you get did you do you at least get my point I get your point I know what you're trying to do you're trying to do is you're trying to capitalize on your moment as much as you can you're doing what you're trying to do to self-promote I personally, you know, have had the same issues. I've had very similar issues where my shit's been radical. You know, my shit's been very close. My shit is considered very controversial, very outlandish, very raw. I, you know, I get the cussing, I get the drinking sometimes. I don't really drink much anymore. But I've I've changed over the years just because of what I want people to think of me. You know, because I feel like sometimes if you if you joke too much you get considered a joke i don't want i hate that tyler carpenter gets labeled a dome racer and he only gets attention for one week of the year but there's there's a lot of reasons why that why that happens but i worry sometimes that it's just because of that dome wrestling atmosphere that people enjoy his character fits there but it don't fit with the jonathan davenport style you know and people don't ignore it or take it seriously when he's at the world 100 or give him that attention they don't see it lining up the same. Well, you see, Tyler Carpenter has the same problem I do. He don't have the budget to go big time, super late model racing like like I do. I don't. We don't. Me and my dad, we're the only two people that work on the race car. It's me and my dad. So if we had the budget, you best believe we'd hire a pit crew and we'd go run the Royal uh, Lucas Oil Series. Right. And the only thing that's probably going to hold but, y'all back is the but, money. But, yeah. And this is what I'm saying. We're doing the best we can. Yeah, I, we could go and run, you know, every modified race in this country right here. But our problem is we don't have the time and we do not have the money. What about USMTS? What about USMTS? USMTS? That's, yes. That's, that's in the Midwest. That's in the Midwest. We don't have the time well, to travel out there. True, you are in Kentucky. Is that a bad area just to be for racing? I was talking to a, a couple people. It depends, I guess. It's it, 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 it getting really bad for modified. We're <laughs> modified are starting to really get hurt around here. So, but uh, is it that because of the cost of them though? Tennessee, Tennessee Missouri, and Illinois. That that's our main areas really for modified. Tennessee is not UMP, but it still has a lot of modifieds down there, like Kentucky, like three you know you go back three years ago and 
three years ago, modifieds were the talk of the town. If modifieds were going to that racetrack, it was a special. Now you can't even get the six, seven modifieds to go to a racetrack. You can't get four or five modifieds weekly basis. So like, what? What? I, I, I go ahead. can't even go to a local racetrack that doesn't pay four hundred dollars to win. What class? Like, I, I can only go to a local racetrack if it pays a thousand or more to win. Which I was lucky enough, you know, when they paid to you know go down there and you know make money and win because. I mean, that, that, it's in my backyard, and it, and I'm good at those racetracks. Were you at Bristol last year, the first year? Did you go to either of the Bristol races? I didn't. I, uh, my stuff wasn't together, you know. Like I said, just me and Dad, we don't have our stuff together. And I, I don't see the point in going to Bristol. I don't. I, I think the racetrack's just a one groove. And it, 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 it's like just an experience to go to it's Bristol. It's almost there, like the dome. A, see, the dome. It's, it's almost. This, this is my the dome is my dream race. The okay. dome is, I, I want to win the dome. The dome, I've been every year it's been held. The dome is legit my dream race. Now, do you, do you did you did you get my point in what I was trying to say at all though, or did you just think I was bitching at somebody because they had a moment? This, this is what I see. That's you can tell me what you think. Coming. I know where I was coming from. I got the documented evidence of why I feel the way I feel. <laughs> I think you're coming in from. I think you're coming in from a business standpoint. You're trying to get money into the sport. You're trying to get viewers into the sport. You're trying to make the sport new people reach around, um, become you know a big name for itself. Okay. Which you, you cannot change the sport for what it is. If you go up to a basketball team and say, uh, "You can't wear Nike shoes anymore. You can't. Uh, you can't cut you." You got to tuck in your jerseys, which they are. You you can't wear headbands anymore. You know, you 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 can't post on social media. You know, you you can't go see fans. You can't, you know, in interviews. You can't express what you thought about the game. That 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 you know, that's what you're trying to do. But that's not that's not the, no no because I stand by the Tyler Carpenter and the, the Kenny Wallace celebration and even the Hudson O'Neill is, issue because I believe that's competitive based emotion. You know, it's winning celebrating emotions. It's 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 mad at somebody emotions. Well, because I, I I think if somebody's taken this the, the the sport seriously, if they wreck their race car, they're upset about that. I think that that is an, a natural emotion. I don't think that joking about destroying a race car is respectful or serious. That's just me. I mean, I mean, the, you can view it different. You can act how you want. I don't care, but. That's how I feel about it, and I express my opinion on it. Because it was you care enough to talk and have me on your mind to talk about it and make three videos. Somebody, no, no, no. I mean, I don't want to pull up the message that I received, but I didn't even know what the hell you did. And then some racer sent me. I was on the way there. I was I was trying to get there Friday, but I was busy working. I couldn't get there in time to go to the dome. I got to the hotel. Somebody messaged me and said, "Can you believe this shit?" And I go, what are you talking about? He said, this is embarrassing to the sport. Sent me the clip, saw it, because he sees where I come from. This is a, a longtime viewer of mine. And, and this is the type of thing that I don't think helps in that kind of moment. That's how I view it. That's how I view it. I just don't think it helps. There's a lot of battles that this sport is going under. And I don't think that you shouldn't be able to express and all this stupid shit that, you, that you're saying not saying you're saying it to me. I can understand your perspective because of how I've come about this. You, no, I know. Okay. I'm saying that I'm not saying you were just, no, you just said to me, you said you want me to, that I want it to where you can't say what you say and you can't meet fans. No, I'm not. I'm talking about that stupid. I don't, I think that's stupid to do that to somebody to restrict them from saying what well, they think. You know, I can't meet fans, but you're saying, you know, I'm, I'm embarrassing for the sport that I'm not what the sport needs. So that, the that, situation. The situation. I mean, hopefully, like like I was saying, I came into it like that. I came into this being pretty outspoken, being pretty way worse than my video for you. I mean, I, I've, I've said way worse about people and the things that they did. And I would get a little more angry or a little more upset about it. And people would tell me and, and I would get caught up in these dramas and they would say I'm this or that. And then I kind of ignore most of the comments. But when it comes to somebody that I listen to, I may listen to what they have, have to say. And my stuff has changed over the years to, because I understand the responsibility. 
you know, you're, I think that your responsibility in that moment is because it is such a big grand stage that you are representing the sport because people are paying attention to that race in that instance more than most any other race that's happening. That's why people want to go to the Dome. It's an exposure. It's an experience. It's a chance to make a name. And I feel like when you're in that dome, you're in that arena, you're representing more than just yourself, in my opinion. And that's that's why I've had to change my shit from not being as extreme because I know that sometimes when I got these big followers and people and people may be tuning in to watch Dirt Racing because it's a topic on YouTube, they never heard of it, that it's me first time they see it, that whatever I'm saying is coming at it from a serious perspective that ain't just illogical and mad and crazy or whatever, or this or that. You know, I took I took what I said about your situation very seriously because I don't think it's just about you. Like I, like I told you when you messaged me, it's a bigger issue. I, I think the biggest issue here, and I, I'm coming from your angle, the biggest issue is that they're seeing a kid get out of the race car after, after tearing it up. I will say the car is pretty tore up. We could get it fixed. Especially after the sales we have with the t-shirts, I'm, I'm not going to expose that number. But it, I don't want to know. Do what? I don't want to know. That's your own business. That, that's what I'm saying. I'm not going to expose it. I'm not going to expose that number for anyone to hear. But I'm saying it, it, we don't have to worry about fixing the race car. And like I said, I have my primary car, my 2019 Elite, sitting out in the shop, uh, getting ready to put a body on it, and hopefully can get to go to Volusia. Never, never raced Volusia. Been there many years. Hopefully, I get to go to Volusia. Hopefully, you know, all these people can go down there and support me. Okay. You said the bigger issue. I thought you were leading to something. Yeah, the bigger issue, and this is it. There's people out here that don't have this opportunity. So, they see me, and they're like, why is this kid out there wreck the race car and gets that opportunity? And my and my reaction to that is, I I am a kid from Kentucky that's been trying to make a name for myself for I don't know how long, been trying to post things on social media that'll get me a following, but I finally got that, finally got that, you know, you know when you're fishing and you get that tug on the line, and when I got that tug, I just set the hook and I fired that reaction off, and you just you don't understand the way I felt when the whole arena erupted. And that's when I knew I had him. And that's when myself really came out. Okay. And the issue is, you say people are upset you had the opportunity to do that? Well, yeah. People are upset I had the opportunity to go to the Dome in the first place because people think I'm not a uh, talented enough. Or I never said anybody. that. You may have, Maybe someone I, else said that. Listen, did you ever hear me say... Chaz Thompson said that I do not deserve the power. No, no, or I do not no. Deserve- so, so you're telling me there's haters, or, or technically there's people hating you right now from that type of mindset of you. They're hating now. Even no, more? There are, there are hard many haters, but there's more fans and more people that actually understand the opportunity that I got. And understand, because... The only reason here, I'm going to tell you the only reason I did this, the only reason I got out the car like that, because I've been a fan of those seats. Every year I've been to the Dome, I've been a fan of those seats. Last year I got the opportunity to go help Kyle Stephens, but I've been a fan in those seats, and I know exactly what the fans want, because I was that fan. Okay. And so when you got out the car, you were like, all right, well, let's just say what if I was in the stands I'd want to hear. Exactly, and that, and you know what I did. That's exactly what I did. I didn't get out, and I and I, I didn't I didn't want to be like you wanted me to be. I didn't get out, and I didn't piss and pout. I was I was being myself. And if you if people don't like me being myself, I don't want them following me. I don't want them being you know a Charlie Mefford fan. Well, I feel I, don't, I, don't want I them feel being a, I, I don't. Okay, so Spike earlier was talking about uh, ways of promotion and self promotion, and I, let me just start by saying this. I feel like who you are is who I'm talking to right now. I feel this yeah, is exactly. you, right? I feel this is like you right now. You're just talking to me. You're on here. We're just talking. I feel like this is you right now. I feel like, though, sometimes that people get, uh, I guess, in the promotional aspect, you know, a Jake Paul syndrome, where they feel like they need to act out in some way 
to get some attention. And that, honestly, and I'm not blaming you on this because I've been seeing this and I said this to some people I was around. I've been seeing this type of, let's say, let's try to get a soundbite personality on mics lately that I've never really seen before, especially on the Fender world. It's like they're always trying to find a, 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 a way to, to slip a cuss word in or, or do this or do that. And you didn't cuss, not saying you did, but I'm just saying that's why I say it's more, more than just you. I feel like there's a subculture happening that the way you get fame in the dirt racing world is when a mic's in your face, do something. And it doesn't matter what it looks like or what it is or what's it about. As long as I do something, then I can get some attention to help fund my race car, help all this stuff out, sell shirts, all that. It's more so about selling shirts than personal representation. I don't want the dirt. I don't want you to be looked at as the catch me outside girl or something, you know, just said whatever and got no one wants to be a catchphrase. You know, I don't think you if you're actually are a good, talented race car driver, I don't want you to be the you can't park their kid. I don't want you to be known for a catchphrase at the Dome. I want you to be known for whooping some ass like a Tyler Herb or, or Tyler Carpenter. So I just think that, there's, that, there's the, certain ways to make a name. What name do you want to make for yourself? You know, these are stuff I, I've had to face this stuff, too, because that's why I say I've readjusted what I've done just because of understanding that. I, I made a name for myself right there, and then that's going to get me a following, and the following is going to see what I can actually do in a race for besides go upside down at the Dome. And then that, that, that's when... You know, it's really going to affect me. So you're you're Not hoping that you were just hoping that this is kind of like a, a a door opening moment that you can then get people to walk in because of this situation, and then no matter what you did exactly. to get them into the store, at least now you can sell them the food you're cooking. Exactly. See, okay. I had to get my name out there. So I had was, to get my name out there and vote myself. So, so it was, everybody knows who. And then and then apparently you did a really good job announcing. I actually had one of uh. One of the supporters, or, sp- or partners, I guess I could say, they were uh, mentioning your broadcasting abilities and how you were very bright and smart. I mean, I, 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 that's not my first time really broadcasting anything. I've I broadcast a lot. I've done, you know, virtual shows on iRace, and I've done... So wait, you iRace? I, yeah, I, I race a lot. Heck, I, I was iRacing, you know, before this came up. Oh, okay. So then you have been to Volusia, technically. Yeah, well, listen, okay, I could say I've been to Bristol, too, then. That's true. That's true. But they don't have dirtles in the game. Not, no. They don't have I, dirtles. I think, I think, I think Ari can try to do it, but, like, it just, it kind of didn't work out, so. So, so, I, I'm guessing then we have to do some kind of grudge match between me and you on I racing now for some money. Okay, okay, and see, see, and and then you can you can post this, and see you can get it out there, and we can actually get sponsor money off of this. So me and you don't have to spend any money. We can get sponsors, and whoever wins takes the money. And that's looking at a business standpoint. That that's a very quick, smart business plan that works out very well. You're you're extremely intelligent. Damn, I sold you short. You play. You no, basically. I'm not, I'm not you basically. Number. Here's what you did. I know what you did now. You did exactly what Trump did. You came out and told all of these dummies what they wanted to hear and took in all the votes. I wouldn't call them dummies. They're my supporters. They're. they're well, the I mean, that Trump, I, Trump ain't gonna people, say that. Trump. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 I finished. I just said, these, I'm not going to call them dummies. These are, the people I, these are the people that support me. These are the people that I love. Oh, I'm I being, love them, I'm, I'm, I'm being extremely sarcastic in saying that, but. Yeah, well, I, 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 I'm not going to you know, put that on me. Well, I'm just saying, it's it. <laughs> that's, a poli- that's a politician's game. That's a controversy creates sales type of mentality is to say whatever gets the attention. The squeaky wheel gets the oil. Yeah, that's right. So you're you're saying now you have it all planned out. This was premeditated. You're saying before you even got to the dome. My my goal for the dome. It, uh, it's gonna sound stupid. Okay. I just, I just wanted to walk out that tunnel for driver intro. That is all. It's ever since I was a kid. I legit in here. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you this because I I like the people to know because it, it, it it's a funny story. Me and my buddies used to get on the video game Fortnite. Oh boy! And we used to—I used to build the dome on that game, 
and be able to walk out tunnel, and we would legit play songs through our phone speakers into our mics so we could just act like we're walking out of the dome. We raced golf carts, acting like it was the dome. But now, now you can kind of feel how special this event means to me. It definitely seems like it's gaining a Chili Bow-esque following for the Fendered world. And the, the crowd, you say you have been there as a fan, the crowd there Saturday night was probably the biggest I've ever seen it. Um, next year, I would, I, I'd assume they'd have to open up the second level. I, I don't I don't understand why it's not open. I think Cody needs to open that second bowl, unless unless it's a price deal, which, you know, that sell out seats, or maybe, you know, uh, air deal, because all the air rises, and, you know, it's kind of be uh, like, a, like a stuffing van. But like I said, you know, I think it needs to be open. I think that's a, you know, a money pit waiting to happen. Well, I think that um, I know one – I know one thing that's expensive in these indoor events is for dirt racing is the cleanup. They have to pay an actual professional cleaning crew, from my understanding, to come in and clean these the dust off of everything. And I think somebody told me it was around the thirty five to forty thousand dollar mark to clean up the dust. I believe, not not a hundred percent sure, but I would assume if you open up that second level, that that would go up at least five thousand. Yeah, that's but see, I think they could uh, they can make ten thousand dollars off of those seats up there probably. I don't know. I, there's not that many seats, but I think you know they they can most definitely make that five grand right there. Yeah, I, I mean, I I mean, I think it's I, and that would be amazing. Um, uh, that would be awesome. I I I feel like the track needs some configuration changes. Me personally, I think. What what is your opinion on the actual track? Because it is. It is. It, a lot of people say it is what it is, but I have a feeling it could still be better than what it, it has been. I, Thursday uh, was too slick. Friday, I mean, you only got so many laps on it, but it looked better. Saturday kind of looked like the worst track night of the week, which is unfortunate because that's the main night. See, the dome has to be rough. There's, there's no, da- there's no way about it. It can't be smooth as sap, smooth as gli- uh, smooth as glass. You know, the best race in there has came in the rough. But I don't understand, you know, that, that people's equipment, that they're racing on and all that. But I think the show for the fans, the racetrack needs to be a little, have a little bit of character to it. But I, I've been watching videos in the past, but the racetrack looks a whole lot just smaller. Like, it's not as wide, and, they, uh, you know, the straightaways don't seem as long. Right. Yeah. And, and I think they uh, skinnied it up to make it taller. That first year, I heard they were down on the concrete or something like that. So they probably had to make some changes. They probably took the dirt that they had for the width of the track and moved it. I, I, only guessing, but um, I don't know. I just think that it could use some changes. I don't know why. It, it, it does always clot up. They always throw a chunk up off the ground, and entering one was horrible. Um, but, I mean, I thought I thought Friday was awesome. I thought Friday had a great racetrack. Um, what what I- are – go ahead. I'll go ahead. What are you going to do now? You're only focusing on Volusia. You you're not running a micro at the Chili Bow or a midget or anything like that. I'm I'm, I'm not a micro driver. I'm not a midget driver. I'd love to. I'd love to experience that. But you know, I mean, I'm not going to spend my money on just one race just to you know not know what I'm doing. I, if somebody you know would offer me you know a deal, I'd I'd offer in taking it. It's just I don't know what I'm doing in a micro. I don't know what I'm doing in a midget. But I, uh, I'd, I'd love to experience that. I mean, that was talking one year. Is like, you know, I mean, we, we'd love to go out there and experience. I'd love to just go to Tulsa just to uh, watch and just sit there one year and go what? to the Chili Bowl. I've been, I've been thinking about going to the Chili Bowl this year just because the atmosphere. I love the racing atmosphere. I love indoor season. It don't matter if it's go-karts, late models. Midgets, just the indoor atmosphere is like no other, and that's what really you know that 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 gets me going as a race fan. You know, all race car drivers—they're not just race car drivers; they're race car fans, race car you know entrepreneurs. They're not, right. they're not just you know Tom Barry, you know, sitting in a car. True, they're, they're race fans themselves. Like JD, he's a race fan. Right, he, he loves this racing. He just he don't love just driving race cars. He loves. Right, and that's the only way you could truly do it. Um, 
that, that's interesting you say that you know i we could i mean i know spike knows guys obviously i yeah he just said in the comments Chaz, get him a ride i mean i did just transfer a california local california guy over there running sprint cars you know he was uh I was over there for the Outlaws, drove out there myself, and uh, he so he kind of jumped off the screen against the Outlaws to me a few phone calls later, and now he's got a full-time ride next year in Houston's, you know, relocating uh, to the Midwest. Uh, I, I like finding talent and giving them opportunities. I, 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 unfortunately, I didn't get introduced to you on a winning note. I got introduced to you on a joking note, and I think that's where it hit my nerve. Um, because I've just, I've suffered personally through promoting this sport of people considering it a joke or a hobby. And that's a, a horrible, um, horrible, very damaging image for this sport. And I don't think that's the case. And, and just here by talking to you, I don't think that that's the case for you. Uh, but that's how I felt I was introduced to you as a, as a race car driver. Yeah, I, like like I said, this is my life. This is all I've ever done. This is all I've ever wanted to do. I, I can't. I, I don't understand how people could take this as a joke. And, uh, Me either. I, mean, I understand. I, I understand people. Oh, you're just going in circles, and I have to explain to them it's not just going in circles. Right. It's not. You you got you got machines out there working. You know, you got the right setup. You got you know drivers that are out there. You know, doing this for a living. I know my buddy of mine, Trev Jacoby, this is all he, this is, he didn't, he quit work and he quit his job just to focus on racing, which he got a job again because th this sport's too hard. Right. Yeah, you know, we, we, takes we full time. We spend all the time don't get paid. Right. That, that's one of the biggest problems in dirt racing, but we can't help that. We got, we, we go to the places where there's money being paid and then that, that's where we got to race. Right. And, and then how can you worry about your respect and all this other shit when you're busy, you know, trying to get the car ready for the next track? You know, so I mean that that that's you're right about that. You can't do this sport uh, uh, part time, uh, you know, and that's what I've had to do for four years. It's been a full time 365 deal for me, so I take it very seriously. Um, yeah, I mean, we could work on chili bow or shootout. I don't know how do you feel about micros. I, I personally believe the shootout's harder to win than the chili bow. I'd love just to go up there and experience. It don't matter if I'm winged, non-winged, junior. Okay. I, I'd love so, to go okay, this is a great question for a 16-year-old. What is obviously you're in the fender world? What is sprint car racing like? When I say micro and midget, it seems like you have no clue, kind of the difference. You're just as oblivious as a regular person on the street. See, I, I mean, I know a little bit. I know one has a wing, one don't. One there's a little bit more motor. It's there's a lot, but I know the sprint car world is some of the most bad A drivers out there. To go and get in a car that fast, that, you know, it, like you said, it looks like a doom bug. And to go out there and going that fast around a quarter mile racetrack, you know, running side by side and easily one mistake and you could be sitting in the stands with everybody else. It, it I think that, that's why, you know, I'm halfway kind of nervous about, you know, getting in a sprint car. I've, I've, I've had offers. But I'm like, I don't know if I can because it's just so wow. Well, I hope. How, Go ahead. Yeah, it's just it's just wild how the sprint car works. You know, I was um, I was I was watching down in a uh, Volusia. It was me, Brandon Shepard, and a uh, Sean O'Neill, and we was watching the non wing And this dude came through, and he broke a drive shaft, and you know the. Spirit car drive shaft through in between their legs. Yes. And it broke both of his legs. Yes. But above that, somebody hopped his right rear because he broke and slowed down his pace. And he hopped the right rear and went straight to the fence, straight coming towards me. That was at Volusia. And, uh, you know, congrats to the Volusia guys for, you know, making a safe racetrack and safe, safe fence. Well, I mean, I'll tell you what, something that's really funny, you know, we always think that these, uh, sprint cars are super dangerous and i would agree that's probably and that's why i think they deserve you know respect i think winged is a little more dangerous than non-wing I, I know traditionally non-wings a little more viewed as dangerous because you used to flip insanely uh in, in comparison to winged but impacts is what hurts people now and and the sprint cars are going you know with the wings on 30 to 40 mile an hour faster but i don't i don't know if this question is going to 
make me understand a connection or a disconnection, but do you know who Donnie Schatz is? You know, funny story. You know, I'll tell you about that Volusia incident. I was down there helping Donnie Schatz on his late model. Okay, okay, because there's a connection with Shepard. Which, which Donnie, Donnie, he knows me. I, um, I used to race with his niece's go-karts, uh, Batesville 2020, when he raced a go-kart. So, yeah, I... Me and Donnie, we know each other. I, I know that shot family. Pretty you know, well. that's actually funny because when I told him, I was like, well, I texted him. I was like, well, I might not make it through tomorrow. He said, why? I said, well, uh, I kind of, you know, said what I thought on this old uh, uh, Mefford deal and don't know if I'm going to make it out. And he said, good old charging Charlie. So, yes, he, he does. Now that you say that, now that makes a lot more sense why he would say that. So, yeah, Donnie, he's a good guy. Uh, we always call him the Dale Earnhardt of Dirt. He's always strutting around in them Wrangler jeans and mm-hmm. snake skin boots. You know, it's very it's very creepy. You know, I did a very, uh, a really good video around him and David Gravel uh, this this last year at Cedar Lake. And it really, when I was filming him, I was like, if you was to take NASCAR in the 90s and place it right here, Donnie Schatz could be very relatable to Adele Sr. And, and David Gravel could be relatable to a Jeff Gordon because he's very pretty boy, you know, kind of more flamboyant lifestyle kind of like a a jeff gordon was but that's a a very interesting thing but what i was going to lead up with was donnie shots when i did my talk show with him last week um he told me i asked him what was his worst wreck in his racing career and i was expecting him to say something here something there he told me that the worst hit wreck impact period in a race car was at knoxville in the nascar trucks That just blew my see, mind. Yeah, I, I, that blew my mind. Yeah, I, I see that. How? The NASCAR is supposed to be the oh, big, biggest racing of all time, this and that, and especially how slow those trucks are. Right, at Knoxville. There. Like I told him, I said, that's like that's like a low risk for them. What do they feel when I, I, they I, hit the wall at, at Chicagoland? Yeah, imagine the hits they take at Talladega. I don't know why he said that, uh, but we consider sprint cars the crazier one to get into like if you was offered a truck at knoxville you would be like oh that's safe but if you're offered a sprint car at knoxville you may second guess it just because of that in our mind danger factor that comes along with the sprint car yeah i mean you don't you don't think about trucks going upside down and flipping over the fence at knoxville no well he just got he he got spun around on the he got spun go ahead you wouldn't really think twice about getting a nascar truck at uh there no Knoxville no and all he did when on the replay I went and pulled it up to put it in the interview he spun the truck around on the end of the front straightaway in a big pile up and somebody hit him from uh the nose to nose they hit him head on it wasn't very it wasn't full speed really but that was it and he said that was the worst wreck he has ever been in his racing career out of the flipping in fires and getting burned all this other stuff he said that was the one that hurt him the most blew my mind but it also made me think how safe are sprint cars? He was trying to say that sitting upright, which is the biggest difference between open wheel and fender, is in the open wheel cars you sit like you're on the toilet or something. You know, you don't sit like you're in a car. I've got a to. So it, that this uh, we could probably get you in a micro. Um, I know a lot of your followers, you know, said I'm a dumbass and I've never raced, but I have raced all of them, sprint cars, modifieds. I even raced big blocks up there for a little bit. Um, But we could probably get you into the shootout for sure. That's easy. Chili Bowl is a little different. It's exactly what it do. Well, a micro is what we would be putting you in, and that is basically a – I don't know. You probably watch Haley Deegan a little bit. Um, Yeah, I I don't know what a micro is. It's the step down from a midget. It's the step down, but it's a micro. It's a it's a motorcycle motor, and you lay down in them, and the and the engine's off to your left. It's closer to a to a go kart. That's what I got burned in yeah, one. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Now, I'm, yes. But I, I, yes, I, yes. I, you're talking about yes. So that and they got a wing and a non wing, and and it's apparently they're more expensive than they they used to be. They're I mean for the top ones they're like forty five fifty. Now question. I'm assuming your primary car is fifty thousand dollars, correct? It, it's on up there, yeah. The 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 way the economy's going, you know, they're getting more and more expensive every day. Okay, so my assumption was it from an asshole perspective, it was from knowledge. 
but like that that's one thing that struck me off that that, that was a forty five hundred dollar race car so but it wasn't really i was like dang he paid this fifty thousand so dollars you're I, telling I really me that car race ready was forty five no 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 it no 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 it was a roller for uh forty five hundred okay and then the motor was well i guess at that point you can't really damage the motor i mean you could but yeah, that, that, and that that's the motor I run all 24-7. I mean, I, that, that's the only motor I got. Okay, okay, okay. And, and the funny thing is, heck, you know, you, you say I don't have a job, but, heck, I'm fixing to start going to work for my motor builder himself. Well, that's good. That's good. But you do understand you are very fortunate, regardless of how you're in a race car at 16. Oh, you, you, don't, you don't understand. Like, every time, like, I, I, every time, like, I've you know, rip the quarter panel off of it or damage the nose. I, I walk up and hug that. I'm like, I apologize for tearing the race car up. And well, you could understand how if I only met you from that clip, I could not guess that. I, see, you know what I mean was, by that, though? You okay. know what I mean by that, though? Yeah. Just saying. In my defense. Right. In my defense. It sounds like you're a good guy. It sounds like all this stuff that I just don't know, you know. But in my defense, this is what I got. And this also, that one clip that I had to judge on, being a knowledgeable race fan, this is also a clip that people who have no idea about the sport is going to judge you as, too. That's the main reason I wanted to get on here. Just just to set you straight so you know exactly what type of guy I am. Okay. Well, it... it you, have, you, you can't say you haven't learned a lot of that old, old Charlie and Charlie. Oh my God! You you say it so cocky. Are you trying to be Jake Paul? Are you trying to be Takashi? <laughs> Are you trying to be the the Takashi Six Nine of racing? I'm trying to make a joke. Try trying to get a laugh out of you. Try, try to it, make it's a not, joke. It, me. I mean, I am joking. I'm laughing. I, I, you can't see my yeah. face. I mean, obviously. No, I, I'm, I'm, watching, I'm watching the stream. I just can't hear it. I'm, I'm looking at the chat. Okay. So I, I see okay. All Okay, so question, people. question. You are already my friend on Facebook. What have you seen any of my videos before? Or was I just stupid? Why? Why was I your friend on Facebook? I, I have no idea. Because Kyle Stephan, I know you. A, um, uh, I know, I know. You always used to talk about him, and, I, and it's Kyle. He's one of my. He's one of my close friends. Uh, he's a good guy. So I, I just, I've always. Oh, Kyle. He's a, he's a great guy. Uh, he's, he's he's one of my. He's one of my biggest. Uh, biggest buzz, and he helped me a lot at the racetrack. He's he's one of the best guys in the pits. But I, uh, yeah, I've always just seen you on a uh, social media way back in like 2018, 2019, back when I just started, you know, in big cars. I, I really, and I've always, yeah, I've always just followed your stuff, really. Okay, okay. Here recently, I haven't been seeing none of it, so I really haven't been following. Well, I mean. I joked and, and unfortunately had to learn about misogyny a little bit on Facebook. I joked with some one of my friends and called him a slut, and uh, Facebook deemed that as a, a, a deleting account offense in 2020, February of 2020, and uh, well, four, 21, sorry, and they uh, basically took my Facebook page with 20,000 followers away. So that's how that happened. That's why I'm on YouTube now. Yeah, I mean, it, and that's just that's that's the people we live with today. They just see. I I, I wanted to make jokes, and you know, I I like I lived in school when I used to go to school. I, I'm fortunate enough to be homeschooled now, so I could further uh, pursue my racing career. But I um I've always seen you know people just I always try to make people laugh, and, and that's that's all I try to do is just you know make people laugh, make people you know enjoy their day and enjoy you know the time they spend with me. Right. I understand where you're coming from there, you know, trying to trying to get a joke out of something. Well, I know. I mean, that's how, like I said, I used to be the, the same way, and I was, you know, calling somebody a joke or a joking name. And, and you know, there is – sometimes people do take this racing thing too serious, um, and it does cause issues. But I think that internally sometimes it gets taken too seriously, and externally I think it gets taken not serious enough. And I'm just, we got to figure out a way to make sure that people take it seriously. Like you say, you say you could bat the whole rednecks going in circles yourself all the time, you know, and that's a big, big problem. You know, people should be projecting you as what you just did is kind of like a, a number one draft pick or something for some national racing team. But they're, they're not because of the setting, because of what it's viewed as. They're, they're viewing you as a guy who's just, you know, running a car in a circle. That's what socially we get viewed as. So, I mean, um, that that's just a really big issue. 
I think. And maybe it can be attacked with jokes and then seriousness, like you said, open it opens the door to get to people to hear what you got to say. I felt like sometimes I was doing that when me and Larson was going at it too much. I felt like I was, uh, you know, trashing him a little bit too much back in the day. And me and Caitlin, you know, and him have talked about that since. And uh, it, it, it is a part of our DNA in a way to get that attention to give our truth. So I guess in, in that aspect, that's pretty much what you, you did here with me. You got my attention, but to, and now I get your truth. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, there's always two sides to every story. And that, that's, that's when I messaged you. I'm like, there's, there's another side of the story that everybody's not saying. I just want everybody to you know, clarify. Well, so I, I'm, I'm not some little sport. I'm not some little spoilt spoil kid that, you know, just gets everything he wants and, you know, doesn't have to work for it. I'm, I'm out in the shop working for it. You know, I, I, don't, I don't have anybody up here just, you know, helping me, you know, do everything, wipe the car down, clean the car, or do the tires. Like, I, I, do, I, I do the body myself. I do my tires. I, I try to maintenance it, you know, since I'm just 16 and, you know, hardly know what I'm doing. I normally have Dad out there with me helping me most of the time with maintenance, you know. I mean, I know, I know exactly what to do with these cars. Heck, I'm, you know, I, I got people that help me with setups, but I do everything setup-wise myself. I really ain't got much to help on, but, you know, my buddy Justin Corsi with uh, Dig City, he, he, he helps me out. He tells me what to do. He gets, he gets me going. But hit one of his big deals, he doesn't really hardly touch a thing on that race car. He makes me do all of it. And that's really helped me this past year. You know, he, he, with him doing that and me knowing what the car does, I, uh, it really helped me. Well, and in that aspect, you kind of, in a weird way, and this actually does make sense to me at least, you also fight the stereotype of if you're 16 and a modified that your daddy just has it all figured out and you just get to live the the rich life because that's what most 16-year-olds in race cars get to experience. You don't understand. And you know what I tell them, Jazz? I go for and I say, hey, I have daddy's money. I'm 16. Do you think I paid for this myself? No. Well, and that's the deal, but there's different ways. Yeah, I'm, and I'm just, I'm super thankful. You know, I mean, my dad, he, I were lucky enough, you know, to have the funds to race on the side. But still, I mean, don't think I just sit around the house all day and do nothing. I mean, I've been sick the past few days, and you know, but I still sit around the house a few days a week and do schoolwork because you know, I mean, I'm still, I'm still a kid. I still got schoolwork to do. But you know, every every chance I really get, I try to go with my dad, you know, and help him. You know, my main primary sponsor, Memphis Construction, that's my dad's business. And a, a few a few weeks this year uh, on his way to his house, I've been up there and helping him just clean up uh, and uh, putting trusses on this and that. And they uh, and uh, you know all the sponsors on my race were they helped. And, uh, I, I'm very thankful for my sponsors. And you know, speaking of that deal, that you know the the flip that happened, heck, it gained me sponsors. Right, I would assume it did. I would assume it yeah, did. And, yourself. And it, 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 I mean, twisted tech. The well, one of the primary sponsors for a uh, the dome. Heck, they they sponsored me. Nice. What did they sponsor you for exactly? Uh, they they sponsored me because I was an outgoing kid. No, I, I mean I didn't know if you meant for next year. If they just like helped with tow oh, money yeah, they or. Next year. Uh, yeah, they sponsored me a uh, uh, one of their scooters for next year. Oh, okay. That's okay. That was the official scooter of the. Uh... Situation. Yeah, that the, the all the all the uh, you remember the I racing stand down there in the pits. Yes, 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 yes. That, that was them. Yeah. I just always remembered the Burrow Maxes because that's where those little electrical pit bikes basically were born. Was the first year of the dome. Yeah, that heck, I, I had one at one point. I had one of the first ones ever created. I really don't know what happened to them. Well, I know a lot of them got stole. I know that was an issue around there. I heard that 30 people got their trucks and cars broken into uh, at the Holiday Inn across the street from the Dome as well, Saturday. Yeah, uh, we, we parked our truck. We we were lucky enough not to get it, uh, anything happen to it where it was parked. But, um, I mean, there, there's St. Louis, that's just downtown. I mean, you're going to have that. I mean, heck, there was, there was, you know, I don't know if I can say this, but there was unforeseen in, uh instances where people lost their life out the streets of St. Louis, right across from the Holiday Inn, in the parking garage. And all really? You, did, you didn't hear about that? No, I did not hear about that. Two kids my age, uh, age got shot. Right there. Really? Yep. 
Well, they, they say it's hard out here for a pimp, but in your case, I guess you made it. Yeah, yeah, I, I stayed, I stayed inside. I was, I was, I did all my pimping on the inside so, of it all. Well, and also, so uh, there was a, there, I didn't know it, but there's only one place open late night there. It's a sandwich shop. It's at the University of St. Louis. We, me and another guy from the racing world went in there at like two in the morning and, and we definitely stuck out. It looked like every college chicken guy in there with suits and dresses on. They apparently said that, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of UFC fighter Cowboy Cerrone, uh, was actually in town for the race and went to, uh, PBR that night. So we did have a celebrity in person, in person outside of, I guess, uh, Myself and uh, Hot Carl. Yeah, yeah. I was just joking. I, and then they had that uh, bull rider that uh, Turbo walked out with. Oh, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. I, I met him doing walkouts when I walked out with Drake Troutman. He, that, that, he's a good dude. I'm, I'm like surprised him. nobody Drake had you walk out with them holding a don't, can't park that here sign. Why did that not happen? No, was that well, discussed? I had, I had, what are, person asked me to go out with him and it was dylan sharp he was just gonna let me ride on his shoulders i'm like drake we gotta do something big time because i'm pretty good buddies with drake now okay so, so it just didn't work out now I, I just i just like i was like me and drake we texted each other that morning you know i we didn't we i don't know how we got on the topic of driver intros i think i asked him what he was doing for driver intros he's like i don't know we need to do something together and we we brainstormed all the way up till like right before the late model feature and he's like, dude, we need to do, we're going to do a cardboard sign, and I'm just going to put, you can't park here, and then I'm going to say, a, um, can't park, and then he's going to say, I can park it. So it was, it was a pretty cool deal. Right, right. Of course, you know, there's a lot of parks out there. You know, the only the only park shirt that I remember vividly is the Brian Clausen park it, so. Yeah, which, you know, I mean, everybody pretty much takes after that, you know, parking it. Yeah, uh, it's considered you know, as parking. Like, like, what did you mean by that? Did you mean, uh, honestly, here's my opinion. When you randomly said it, I was like, is he talking about, like, people in the city saying you can't park on the side of the street in certain areas? What What did you actually mean? Did you just mean? Okay, so do you see a racetrack as a parking zone? Well, I, that's what I'm saying. You can't park here. It's like like in the city streets. Is that pretty much what you? No, were no, just... no. I was I was saying I was saying like you, I mean you just can't park a racetrack. So I'm like, hey, you can't park there. Okay, I didn't know if you had heard that phrase from several people or what. I I, I say that like just in my normal life. I just go up like when I'm out in town, like with somebody like you know somebody stopped on the side of the road or you know somebody like got pulled over. I'm like, dude, you can't park there. And have you heard numbers on that that shirt selling? Because I'm assuming the Pit Lizard shirt was the only one that sold when all this happened. Um, I know uh, Matt Matt I, over I, at Race Ranch is awesome. I've dealt with them. Matt has sponsored me at Race Ranch. So, um, I, um, I haven't heard the exact numbers, but I know he Matt, he sent me a video on Snapchat today. Old Sheldon Creed, the Xfinity Series driver, ordered a shirt. Well, they're, Sheldon. They're still ordering shirts. They're, sh they're ordering shirts of mine from last year. The orange shirts. Right. So what do you, what is your projection? Obviously, you know, I like to give guys like you some more credit than, say, a Sheldon Creed, for example. Because Sheldon Creed had a bunch of financial assistance to get him to where he's at. My argument would be, you're just as talented as any other 16-year-old that right now is running a ARCA car for $1.25 million a year. Uh, what do you feel about... I was on a... Go ahead. I was on a podcast earlier today about six thirty, and I that, that's what I talked about. That I was like, "There's it's crazy how there's so many young kids out here with talent that don't get the opportunity right. because they don't have the funding." There's, right. There's kids out here that are out here winning races that nobody even knows. Well, and that's that's why I think you know the respect for dirt racing has to go up because it's honestly going to be the only place y'all are going to get a shot. You know. And even talented race car drivers that aren't lucky enough to have your dad have a construction business and be in a car at 16. Dirt racing is still, as currently runs, the only place you could maybe go build your business and then by 30 years old, if you have a construction or whatever, you could buy you a race car and actually go and perform. You know, because when we talk about $1.25 million to rent out a ARCA car for a year and $3.5 million to rent out a truck for Hostavar, that's what I was talking to him about. 
It's like that's a very small percentage of people who's going to even get to attempt to do that. You know, that that's not yeah, I, saying that they're the best of the best. That's saying they're the best of the very well off rich. Yeah, it, it's the it's the rich that like driving race cars. That that's NASCAR. Yes, it's it's rich people go karts. So, my my response to that is what do you think we have to do to get people to recognize what you're doing isn't a joke? What do we think what do you think we have to do? to get the respect for that race car that you wrecked. I'm not trying to take a shot. I'm just saying, what do we do to get them to respect these race cars and the drivers behind them? People got to understand that it's their only shot at fame and their only shot to get their name out there. So that, that's where I, that's why you got to understand that if it, that was my only shot the weekend. If, if I didn't say all that right there, when I ended up in the booth, at Flow Racing, when everybody went and bought a T-shirt, no, I just walked back to my pit and loaded up and just had a normal weekend for after that. I would have went up and just watched. Nobody would have knew who I was. Right. Well, that's a uh, uh, that's so, more so talking about you, and that's why I did hint to it being a little not necessarily selfish, but you did what you had to do for yourself. I'm talking about the sport. What do we have to do to get people to respect that car and the drivers behind it? Because that's what you want to ultimately be. You just you can't you can't point them in the wrong direction. There 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 are people out here. I'm not going to point fingers at what class, what what tracks or nothing. There are people out here that are making a mockery of the sport. Like people just not not really caring, not really showing the passion that this sport means. There like are people me out there that are. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that there's people out there that are just going out there to race just to say that they drive a race car. Right. That's to horrible. Say, yes. That, that 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 don't belong in a race car. That no. are just your average Tom Billy Bob. Just hey, I, I got a race car. Look at me. There's there's people out there that deserve the recognition. I know, like like my buddy Cole Hilton. He's he's an up and coming racer himself. He's he's from North Carolina. He's one of my best friends right now. He has a lot of talent, but. Around here, nobody knows who, who he is because he's from North Carolina. He, he nobody was going to recognize him around here because he he don't have that recognition. See, nobody knew who I was in St. Louis because I'm not really from St. Louis. Like you, you can go to my local racetrack and everybody's going to know me. That that's what people are. They're local heroes trying to make a name for themselves. That that's that's what the big stage is. Well, how do we like, go listen, ahead? Jonathan Davenport, he was a local hero once. Jimmy Owens, local hero. Bobby Pierce, local hero. Tim McCready. Well, Tim McCready had backing from his dad, but he was a local hero at once. Yeah, he had a last name. But, I mean, all these people were local heroes at one point. True. But I, I feel but like you, local heroes gotta, have died and, off. you got to have a break in the action to catapult yourself into... The fame that gets you places. Okay, and that's and that's how you see it. How do we get exactly. how do we get people to respect local heroes outside of the sport, though? How do you how do you introduce it to them? Are you, do like, we ba- do we bank on YouTube and Facebook? Because if we bank on streaming, I don't think we're going to get too much exposure. You can straight up, you know. Go and talk to local business owners or just strict, strictly business owners and go, hey, man, there's this kid. He's good. He drives a race car. He would love, you know, maybe to try to further his audience and further the sports audience. Maybe you could, you know, sponsor or let him come out and, you know, show him, let him, let him talk to you. Maybe bring his car out, like, you know, you would, and let him set up at your business, like Spike was saying earlier. Right. Now, do you think that sim racing hurts racing? I don't. Now, it's an argument. There's it is. Kids, it's a really good argument. There's, there's, there's kids out here. And I, I, I can't even lie. I used to be one of those kids that used to just go out there and wreck people for fun. But there's people like, um, say, you know, Majulis, Hauser. There's people out here that are actually doing this for, like, a living. They're out here running you know, money races, 
I mean, you got to look at William Byron. This is halfway the reason he's sitting in NASCAR right now because right. he got noticed El Junior when he was racing on iRacer. Well, Martin Trex Junior. did as it's well. All goes, it all goes, and that all goes back to being noticed. You know, getting his name out there. Okay. And, and, and you think that iRacing could do that for you or just anyone? It could do it for anyone, really. If, if you got the right people surrounding you, like iRacing, it, it's kind of hard to, for them to do it themselves. But, like, you get in the lobby and you get somebody to notice you, like a Dale Jr. or somebody else, you're, you're going to get noticed. And if you have talent on that game, you can kind of relate it back to real life, and that, and he put him in a race car, and he went out there and did great, and now he's driving the twenty four for Hendrick Motorsports. Well, I definitely well he did have financial support. You have to to go to that level, but I do think well, that yeah, of I, I think that no one should get their kid a race car or get a race car until they can run competitive, clean, consistent laps on iRacing. racing. I think that would save them a lot of money either way. Which, what they did is they, um, what, what we did, we, we got a go-kart. And that that's the best start uh, out of anything, getting a go-kart and run laps and get consistent and get good. And, you know, that, that, that builds hand-eye coordination. It builds, you know, uh, just hand-feet control. And get you used car. to being leaned over on the right a little bit. Go kart thing got suspension. You ain't really leaned over, but it's still it gets you. It gets you that feeling of control. And then I, I still say before you buy a real race car that you should you should be able to race make competitive laps on i racing. You well, can't. You shouldn't buy. You shouldn't buy a race car and go straight into a race. That that shouldn't happen. You need to get a um. You need to get in a race car and make practice laps. You can't just go and get straight to race. That I, what I did, I bought a race car. I went and made practice laps at Duke, at Windy Hollow, at Cedar Ridge. I made practice laps before I even got you know in a real race. Right. No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying if you can't make competitive laps on a sim racing game, you're not going to fare well in the real car. And I think to save Which your I time before you do practice in real life, that you should be able to run that game consistently and 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 fairly well before you even practice a real race car that's what i think i've had people come to my house that are very good race car drivers really good really talented and they can hardly make a lap on our race that's very it's true so different it is very true but i think that that is because the the i racing i racing really only teaches you two things it teaches you in my opinion, it, it teaches you race etiquettes, and then it it also teaches you throttle control. And outside of that, yeah. it really don't teach you much. It really it keeps you it keeps me kind of refreshed, you know. Um, that that's like a workout for you know up like sports uh, people, you know, like NFL stars and NBA stars. That, that that's like it's like my workout. It keeps me, you know, hand-eye coordination updated and all that. And it, it keeps me sharp. Well, and I also think that for someone new who's never been on a racetrack, really, uh, you can't recreate it. When you get out on a racetrack, it don't look like a uh, going down the highway. It looks like nothing else. But at least on iRacing, you can learn racing lines, how to drift out to a wall, where you're supposed to actually be on the racetrack. That I think if you just get a race car that you're going to have to learn all that with a real race car and, and something that you could damage or destroy. I just think that, that I racing would, would, would knock all the, the learning techniques off as far as where to be on the racetrack. I think that's a big tool that it's underrated for. Totally. I, I agree. I agree totally with that. That, that, that does make a good point. I mean, I know Ricky Thornton and me and Kyle Larson and Chris Bell, we go back to our factor days and, and chase Briscoe and them. And, I was really good, and I, I used to be 400 pounds back then. I lost my first 100 and got to get into a real race car, and everybody thought it was going to be a joke. And then I got out there in a modified first time on a half mile and was two-tenths faster than the track champion. And Ricky Thornton's in the comment section, and all these guys saying, well, this is, of course, if you take a top sim racing performer 
and put him in a car, he's going to be a little bit better than someone just walking off the street. That's how I feel about it. Yeah, which I know a lot of sim racers that have gotten into real race where they used to do it with they, um, their pro series champion. They used to take uh, yes. a quick warrior race and they used to take them to Charlotte and let them turn laps in it. The only thing that is extremely di- different, uh, one I would say is the vision is extremely uh, restricted in a real race car. I mean, just clarity of view is is shitty underneath all the tear-offs and the dust and the shield can fog up i mean it gets pretty bad uh and then also the one thing that is big and missing is the fear factor and you can't replicate the fear factor um of course my fear factor moments were in i never got scared in a modified or something but i got uh, it was when i went up to new york and raced the big block and their damn cars you know tracks are dusty as, as as hell up there and i'm going down the back straightaway in a, in a, in a dust cloud with the tear offs and I, I can't see the car in front of me and we're wide open running 100 that that's something you can't replicate in high racing or you can't see where you're going you know i think fear factor does play a big difference between the high elites who may jump in a super late mall the first time that that just like when i jumped in the sprint car you you you, you feel you know something Oh, yeah, and, you know, you you don't get the same speed that you do. You don't get the same feel. You don't get the same G-force. You don't get the same, you know, the the breathtaking, the chill factor that we, it, on a sim and in a race car. I've, I've done both. I've done a lot of sim racing. I've done a lot of a um, driving race cars. I've done a lot of go-karts, B-modified, A-modified. I've done a lot of sim racing with late models, sprint cars, and all that. So, and now the it's only thing that's... Not, not, real thing right and now the only thing that's that's left is is the Chaz versus charge charlie live on i racing i already got three sponsors in mind we got a picture we got to figure I, out how I, much I, it's I, gonna I, 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 could you imagine the betting which, I lines got, I, I got pri this weekend so oh my god you got pri well yeah i wouldn't do that this weekend either i got somewhere to be as well but could be some bets laid down I'm, I'm free through the week. Oh, my God. Well, something like that has to take time to be promoted correctly. Um, Although we halfway already had done that. Yeah, we, we've promoted it pretty good, I think. I think so. I think so. And, and, and now, I'm a promoter myself. I, I promote a lot of events on our race. I've done a few Gateway Dirt Nationals, a few leagues. I've, I've done a lot of promoting myself on our race. But you have more background than I do, so I'm going to leave the promoting to you. No, I mean, you could bring your crowd, I could bring mine. I know I could get the Gravels and the Shotses of the world to tune in, the Larsons and the, the, the Open Wheel crowd. I definitely have a little little decent reach over there. I mean, obviously, your name's hot right now, so you got to reach as well. Um, you know, I, I, I would. I, the only way I would have built, built this rivalry any better is if it was, I guess if I would have slipped down to the pitting area and your dad would have knocked me out like I heard he wanted to, but... Outside of that, we did a pretty good job. Yeah, that 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 I think so. Yeah, and I and I think if you know if we could get me in a micro ride, right, I think that would really break the internet. That would be pretty good. I mean, I can pretty much get that to happen. I mean, that's not that hard to happen. The micro ride, that's not that hard. I mean, like I, like I said, I'm 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 up for the challenge. I think I can take on driller season. I think I can you know rumble rumble the Rebel some feathers in uh, Tulsa. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, we could make that happen. We could possibly make that happen. If we make it happen, is your is me and your dad still fighting? I mean, are we doing a pay per view for i racing and like a Jake Paul my, boxing match too? I mean, what are we doing here? I, I, think, I think after the I think after this, I think you know, I I think I just, you just need to see my side of the story. And I I think I think our beef right here is squash. I think you understand my side, I understand your side. Well, my side only comes from give a damn of the sport. And honestly, if anyone was going to hear my message, it would be 16-year-old drivers of the sport who re- who need to recognize the responsibility that they have in the portraying of the image of this sport as well. Because y'all are going to get attention just because you're a younger driver. So whatever y'all do or say is what's going to be emulated as well. I halfway went to Tyler Carpenter because I halfway 
uh, kind of worry, uh, like Spike brought up about promotion, is like in today's society, like I was saying, there is, it seems like, a way to be promoted is to do hit pieces. You know, that seems to be the case. I think we lost him there for a second. Hold on. Lost you there. I have plenty of people calling my phone, just blowing my phone up. I try to hit the try to hit the F U button, but it didn't work. Uh, you hit the F U button on me, apparently. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I guess I did in some way. Yeah, but yeah, we're back. They ain't calling because you're on the show, are you? Or are they just trying to call you to find if you no, have shirts no, left or something? Or it, it's just my friends calling. Me. Okay, okay. But yeah, I mean, it, my serious message that I had, which I felt like I did it as serious as I could would be what I would project to younger drivers just to know, you know, there is a big image that you're portraying. And I know that this hit piece kind of marketing is, 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 is useful. Like I said, I used, I, I guess I kind of halfway did it with what I was doing as well, being very shocking and awing, but there is also consequences for that, for the sport, not necessarily yourself. So that's just what I would like people to know. Oh, I not yeah. I mean, I understand. I understand where you're coming from on that deal, and I understand you don't want people to take this sport as being, you know, embarrassing or just letting everything a. Uh, Who gives a fuck? Fuck it. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. yeah I, I, but like, what I'm doing is I'm just being myself, and I'm just. I'm here, and I made it a little bit. I haven't made it fully, but I think I think I made a decent name for myself by what I've done. I'm not going to say it was the best way to make a name for myself, but it was the best way. With it, it, I took advantage of what I had. Right. Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not necessarily against it now that I know who it is, but without knowing, you know, hopefully people that, listen that, to that, this. That, that's why I private message you. I was like, let's sit down, let's talk, and we'll, we'll get to the bottom of this. Well, I'm glad you didn't respond based on, like I said, I heard your dad and some people were, were looking for me, apparently. But Yeah, I like, see, I'm, I'm not the kind that likes conflict. I'm the kind of guy that solves the issue and then get. I, I, I like getting along with everybody. I don't like, you know, having problems with anybody. I like, I like getting along with them. What's up with the little Chaz comments? Or was that guy on Twitter talking shit? About what? He said something that you were on the flow and you was like, you don't want to say anything to hurt little Chaz's feelings. That was Dean Hoffman. Oh, that was Dean Hoffman? That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, well, the list yeah, goes... Heck, I, no, I, I was in the booth when that happened. Oh, okay. Okay, so he was advising you to not hurt my feelings. He was... I, I, who knows? Who knows? I, I, I didn't even realize what he said until, like, last night. Oh, did you see the tweet, I guess? No, I seen a... um when he said it because I because I, I went back and watched the qualifiers last night because uh, I, I just wanted to see how I did in the booth I, I really haven't got to watch it and I, uh, I watched it and he was like yeah I didn't want to I could say some things but I don't want to hurt little Chaz's feelings I was like dang he took a shot at Chaz <laughs> yeah. well it worked my promotion tactics worked then I guess right if I had promotional aspirations Oh no! It really did. It sucked to do that because I was on. I honestly felt like I was on a good streak. I haven't been pissing anyone off. I've been, you know, just got off the Cody Sommer interview, the Donnie Shots interview. They were pretty successful, and I just, I just, I knew once I was going to say something that it was going to be bad. I knew that I would. I, if if and I was, I was ready to protect. I was ready to take the hit that if you know, uh, say Suave came up when he was doing his walk arounds and saying, "So what? Do you, I heard we, what you didn't like what old uh, Charging Charlie did. What was your opinion?" And I would have said it right there, and I probably would have got. Yeah, you know, I, pro- I wouldn't have been able to get out of the dome if a lot of people knew my opinion. You know, if every person there knew it. Uh, but you know, I just, I just care about, care about certain things about this sport that other people don't. I think that some people just look at it as a party. We were talking about that earlier. It can't just be a party, you know, can't just be fun. It has to be, have an element of seriousness, but I do think the joke, joking is, is right in a way, uh, just certain elements. I think it's, it's not, but what did you think of the Tyler Herb situation? I really, I really, see, you know what's funny? I wore my Tyler Herb shirt that day. I don't know why, I decided to put it on. 
But uh, yeah, I, I really, I didn't even know what happened until like later that night when I, you know, got home and got to bed. Well, home, home away from home, as right. Sean O'Neill would say. But I, uh, it re- really struck me because I, I sat there and I thought about my dad. I was like, I, I don't think I could race. I think I'd have to load up and just go home. Right. It, it would just, it, it, it would really hurt. Because, but he just kept quiet about it, and that, that's the thing nobody knew. And like, and like Spike was saying, if more people knew, it'd have been a bigger deal. Right. Well, and I also think he didn't tell anybody because he didn't want you know sixty thousand people lining up to say sorry about your loss. Yeah, he, he wanted to keep it private until you know everything was calmed out. I mean, if he was committed to racing, how would you be able to race if everyone is reminding you of your dad de- being dead every five minutes? You know, or 50 yeah. seconds. That would have happened. You know, that would have just happened if it was news. You know, and that probably would have been way worse than keeping it in, I think, if he would have let people know. Um, yeah, yeah I, I understand that, which it, it, it really it really did struck, strike me because nobody knew. You know, I, I, I was happy he won because I'm a, I'm a turbo fan at heart. You know, I've been, I've been a turbo fan for a while. Right. And after that. And it struck me. I was like, you know, there's there's people out here, and it and it really made me think. There's people out here in this world. You don't know what they're doing. You know, you don't know what's going on, but they're out here. They're still racing, and they're still having a good time. Yeah. And, well, and I've been somewhat critical of Turbo in the past a little bit. Some of his, not necessarily racing moves, but just kind of public, you know, actions. I haven't necessarily been on on board with all of them. But he's probably the closest thing to a, you know, outspoken, wild type of character in the national scene. I mean, outside of him, maybe, maybe Bobby Pierce, but Bobby Pierce, I mean, he just kind of talks a little cocky and wrecks a car every now and then, you know. Tyler Herb's probably the most vocal uh, national racer there is right now. Yeah, I think that's why he has such a backing because he, he speaks his mind and he and he don't care what people say. He he has a rod, and Randall supports his decisions. Now, what do you? I did ask this earlier. Do you think racers could handle fame? Like, could you potentially handle real fame? Now, when I was saying it earlier, I don't know if he was listening. I was trying to say, like, look, even say you like Trump, you know, there's there's fifty thousand, fifty million, or fifty percent of the population that hates the guy would like him to die. Like, he hears bad things all the time. Obviously, with this situation with you, I was one guy out of it seemed like everyone who was just critical of the situation in the way I had a critical. I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was extremely mean. I felt like I was extremely serious about a topic of a situation, but I wasn't incredibly mean. Um, if, if you got real fame, I mean, there's out pe- there's people out here. If the racing world got real fame, there's people out here that would really be mean. <laughs> you know, look how mean they are to Trump or mean to any any guy you out there who thinks is a good you think is a good guy. If they got real fame, there's there's half the percentage of people in the world that is dogging them daily. You know, that's something that comes with fame. Could you handle that real kind of fame where you don't ever get away from someone being critical of everything you do? I, I think I could just because I don't let really stuff people say get to me. Because when I lay down at night, I know what type of person I am, and I know what person I and I know the type of person I was that day. Right. I, I was being myself, and if people don't like myself, that's their problem. Well, and I was making the comparison. I was like, Spike, if if we took this shirt to a college campus, this pit lizard pimpin deal, that's some. Uh, there's pe- I don't think it's offensive. I think it's a joke. But there's people out there who would literally flip their fucking shit at that. They would want you to burn at the stake, just because they see it. They're, they're crazy. They see it as misogyny. They see it as a pre- They, you know, you know the whole stick. You know, I mean that's that's what the society views stuff like that as. That's the truth. And uh, that that dope pit little pimping shirt. That that was another deal trying to get my name out there. You know, race ranch. That that's one of the biggest branding clothing brand oh i right know now. they do great stuff they do great stuff and and i'm just a little part of part of it but so you know I'm what like, i'm saying you know, like that if you got yeah, real like, fame everybody, everybody know who what the pit lizard is that races everybody knows what one is right and, and it, it's 
and nobody really, you know, says tit lizard chip. I'm like, let's let's do this and try to get a little exposure exposure out of it. Right. Well, I think it's funny, but there's a reason comedians are dying is because their jokes that are in the same type of context are being, you know, they're being crucified for these types of jokes. Social. Exactly. Exactly. They're getting kicked out of business because of jokes in a similar fashion. They're getting shut down. They're losing their careers because of similar type jokes. Hey, my family, they didn't like it. Ha- um, half of my family, they was they was upset that I made those shirts. I'm like, and they they don't understand, you know, where I'm coming from. They don't understand, you know. I'm trying to make I'm trying to make a business. I'm trying to make a business and a name for myself. Why does Spike Fast Racing want to ask Charlie how many pit lizards has he had? See, this is disgusting. This is where the this is where the 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 objective is like, oh my God, he's he's sixteen with pit lizard on his shirt. Like, like they, they would run, they would have a field day with that. They would have a field day uh, with that. That's what I'm worried yeah. about. If this sport got real fame, how many people would get ex- would be unfairly judged? First of all. Because it's already unfairly judged. And then how many people would get exposed in that unfair judgment and crucified publicly over the unfair judgment? You well, know. You, you also back. There's another clothing brand. The Big Johnson shirts. Look, look how big it is. True. True. But it's and, and it's that, branded that, on it's being a joke. I, yeah, I mean, it is that, they made it. They're, they're big corporate spots. They're big corporate names. This is true, but I mean, look at Kanye and Adidas. I mean, I'm just saying. Depends on it depends on what brand or what genre or what group you may offend. You know, that's just what it is nowadays. Which I mean, I done made the shirts. I really can't go back and change it. But that that that, 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 that happened. The shirts were made. Everybody bought them. What's your uh, political opinions? You're almost old enough to vote. Will you be able to vote by the next election? Uh no I won't. Oh Maybe. man. Oh you're you're out there trying to save yourself. You're out yeah, there. Yeah tr- I, 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 I will. I think I will. Are you going to the military? Is that what you're saying? Uh no, because I'm 16 now. 20 at the end of 2023, November 2023, I'll be 20. I'll be 17. At the November 2024, I will be 18. So I think I will be able to vote. No, it's the first week of November though. Yeah, yeah, and I'll I'll be eighteen. By the My first birthday's in August. Your birthday's in August. Yes. Okay, so you will be voting the next go round. Yeah. Okay, so obviously, I feel like we're in a pretty politicized industry. I haven't seen really any other sporting industry align with a political figure as much as i've seen the dirt racing world affiliate with with donald trump don't know why i mean obviously there's reasons why but it is a very trump fueled environment would you agree i mean would you agree there is a lot of trump supporters and racing in general yes I, i really do think that yeah so do you get a taste of what any other ideological thoughts are when it comes to political spectrums, or do you do you only get to see the the Trump side of of stuff? Do you do you do any research on this craziness, or or you just try to worry about your racing and the hell with it all? Yeah, that I, I'm 16. I race. If I was 18, I'd probably be looking a little bit into it a little bit more, but. I really don't care about, you know, all the political stuff right now. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a race car driver. I, I drive race cars. I'm not a politician. I'm not a voter yet. So I, I focus on race cars. Tulsi Gabbard, I would look into it. Um, What do you think about us going to all electric society, though? You're obviously 16. They're wanting to take motorized vehicles out by 2030, 35 for sure. So you're going to live in a world where apparently uh, they're trying to take motorized vehicles away. What is your thoughts on that being a 16-year-old going into the future of motorsports? Well, everybody thought automobiles were bad. You know, we had horses and buggies. Yes, that's true. I was going to make this point. Yep. Everybody everybody thinks electric vehicles are going to be bad. It might help. It might. You're right. I mean, 
I was going to make this joke to Donnie, you know, who's against it. I was like, you almost sound like the, the guys on Horse and Buggy talking shit about trains and coal, you know, or the people in trains and coal talking shit about automobiles or the people, you know, carving on stone mad about books. You know, it's just, it's what happens. It evolves. That's what happens. I mean, everybody's like, oh, you can't do that. Well, imagine what they were saying when everybody's riding horse and buggy and they're building train tracks across the country. You know, you can't. Which I'm here, so I'm not deciding when we go to electric. I, I don't have a say in it, so I really can't be mad or happy that it's going. It, it's the world. We live in it. We, we, we can't change it. Right. That's true. That's I mean, we, true. But we can change it, but it's, it, it's too far gone at this point. Well, in, in a way, it's too far gone. Uh, personal choice is definitely being taken off the table, I feel like. That seems to be the goal, is to take off individual choice of life. Um, at the same time, you know, I made the point to Donnie Shots that fuel is the concern and carbon emissions and stuff like that, whereas uh, in, in, in the sprint car world, they run on methanol. Methanol r- produces zero carbon emissions. I literally had to prove it on our talk show because he thought I was full of shit. Methanol is a wood alcohol. It produces zero carbon emissions, has no oil. Unlike where gas does have oil involved, uh, it's an oil mixture with alcohol and, and combustibles. So technically, sprint car racing should be safe, but modifieds and late models running on gasoline are, are, are the ones that still do produce the carbon emissions. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Um, regardless, obviously you have no opinion on that. Um, what is something I guess you want to say before you get out of here? It is getting pretty late. I'm assuming you're on East Time, so it's 1230 there, correct? No, nah, I'm, I'm Central. Oh, you're still Central. Okay, okay. Are you, yeah, near, are nah, you near Lawrenceburg at all? Are you up in that area, like the Ohio area? What area of Kentucky are you oh, actually no, no, in? That, 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 that. I'm in Western Kentucky. I'm about two hours from Paducah. Oh, okay. So you're closer to the Indiana side. Yeah, yeah. Indiana's like an hour and 30 minutes. So then you weren't very far from the Dome. What, three or four? Hello? Oh, four. Hello? There you go. You're back. said four? Yeah, I'm about four hours from the Dome. So what would your weekly tracks be? Uh, Clarksville... Uh, Cedar Ridge Speedway, uh, Windy Hollow, Paducah, really. And is there any chance to go USMTS? I still feel like you could do that. I I, I really haven't put no thought into it. I know Krupp did for a little bit, but I just, all, all it really is, is, it ain't really nothing really, is it? Well, I mean, it's... It's paying very well. I think it's a ten thousand dollar minimum pay uh, for their weekend races. Uh, I know McKinney's went over and done oh, it. I got to really change. Spoiler. Well, you got yeah, you got to change a few things. I know they've done a lot of rule changes over the last couple of years that has kind of let them get closer to competing against one another. They had a challenge race, I believe, at thirty four. Or one of those tracks over there near the border of Iowa and Illinois. They had a challenge race, but. USMTS is technically considered, like me and Kenny Wallace, when we were talking about it, it's like the NASCAR Modifieds. And Modified Racing is very weird. Uh, you know, when you try to class it up across the country to figure out who's the best Modified driver, you got this issue with UMP and IMCA and USRA. USMTS is the, is the big touring series. Um, it seems like UMP is kind of the smaller pond of the three. Because uh, IMCA is so big, obviously it goes everywhere. Uh, and then USMTS is the one that gets paid the most. And then Dirt Car, UMP, seems to be kind of this Iowa, or, uh, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio Valley there into Tennessee a little bit, uh, North Carolina. And then they don't even really run UMP um, much until you get down to Florida after that, but it just seems like modifieds in general, it's hard to separate who's the best. And then you have the two traditional IMCA guys like Grabowski and Ricky Thornton Jr. run one too. What's your opinion on the modified scene of the of the Americas? I think it's funny because me and Hawk Carl was talking about that. We was down there doing driver introductions and I was like I don't I don't know I it was me, 
Kenny Wallace and Hot Carl. And I don't really know what the conversation was, but we, I, I think I was messing with them. I was like, yeah, that's why UMP has the best uh, modified drivers in the nation. Well, I, I would, me personally, I would, I would, I would say that they are third, personally, overall. I think you can't get better than USMTS. Dugan just put in the comment sections, uh, USMTS, you're going to need some motor. That's not technically true. UMP, technically, if you go by the rules and you build it all the way, they have the biggest motor uh, out there as far as you could put money in. Uh, USMTS, you could run a spec and do very well. Of course, they got the open motors that are very expensive, but USMTS, they pay the most. Uh, for an example, at Deer Creek this year, I went to the late mile race. They ran, or no, Mount, Mississippi Thunder, same area up here, Wisconsin area. And it was USMTS and World of Outlaw late models for the weekend. And Kay Dillard, who's a modified driver, ran both. And he and I believe Ricky Thornton Jr. couldn't make it out of the B main. I mean, it was that competitive. To me, USMTS, if you're going to go anywhere in modified racing, you have to find a way to get to it. Because I believe, like I said, it's a $10,000 to win minimum per weekend. And then it is also, I believe, a $75,000 championship. So not only do they, you know, have really good racers, but they also pay the racers the most. And even I was talking to Ryan Gustin. I'm sure he wouldn't say this publicly, but Ryan Gustin, you know, he's second year in to the World of Outlaw Late Models, and he was joking on how he wishes he would have knew that they were going to go to 10000 to win because he would have never went late model racing. Uh, it's just, to me, UMP is top of the line. I give second to IMCA just because of the vast m amount of racing there is from coast to coast in that class. You know, you, 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 they have the quantity for sure. Quality, you could maybe guess, but they got the quantity. I just think UMP is just too small of an area. I mean, Wasoda and UMP are comparable, kind of, a couple states, territory, um, but that's how I would see it. I would go USMTS, IMCA, and then uh, probably UMP, then with Soda, which I guess you got to consider with Soda. They're a pretty big modified area. Yeah, but I mean, it's it, it, it's like you know, tomatoes motto. It's it, it's modified, but they're it's not the same modified. UMP is their own type of modified. With Soda's their own type of modified. IMCA is their own type of modified. Uh, USMTS. Well, and that's the problem, you know. I think that's why when Grabowski came out with the IMCA signal or sign, I, I clapped because I thought it was funny because he's like, I'm IMCA coming to kick your UMP asses, you know. I think we could have a good rivalry like that. If there was a rivalry series, that would be extremely entertaining. If you could take the best modified guys from each sanction and race them, that would be very entertaining. Yeah, I, I agree. Then I wish they could, you know, have a kind of like a series. Go to the go to like a Fairberry, uh, a Boone, and like a Wasota USMTS track, and like the best tracks for that sanction. And I have top, the top ten drivers from each point and send them there. Right, All right. I feel like IMCA don't get much credit because they're considered, and even by me, I would say those are crate modifieds. You know, I mean. Dank Dank down here just said he's on the West Coast. He don't know one driver out there, one modified driver out there, or series out there. When Cody Laney, the uh, IMCA Super Nationals champion last year, is from California. I mean, the, he's won their biggest race, but you got fans out there who don't even know they exist. You know, that's how... Same with... Oh. Go ahead. Same with Ethan Dawson and the UMP deal. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't even know who he was. And then he started driving the Longhorn house car, and he started kicking tail. Yeah, and he's I believe he's a California guy, isn't he? Or Oregon? He, he's California. I think he's like Fresno. Something like that. Yeah, West Coast guys. West Coast guys. What, what about you? Have you got any West Coast opportunities? Anybody try to get you to go out there for Las Vegas or anything? No, sir. No, no, no. Why is it McKinney that gets all the chances? Is it because he's pretty? Because hey, he's, he's a race car driver. He's a, he's a good race car driver. You he, think He has a lot of opportunities mike mckinney is a slump I, I mean you could get in his car and win every race I, I wouldn't say that i mean mckinney he has a lot of experience i've watched mckinney race a lot 
I've watched, you know, a lot of his in cars from Fairbury, and he's just he's just good race car driver. He's up on the wheel, and he, he knows exactly what to do. Who is the best modified racer in UMP? Nick Hoffman. No, oh, man. How are you going to say that? No respect for Harrison. What about Nick Mike Harrison? Harrison? Harrison, he's good. He's good. But he just he just doesn't have the stuff Hoffman has. Why you does, know, Harrison, he, he's, he's good to an extent. If it, if it does not have a cushion and it's super slicked off, Harrison, he's going to run good. It's just he's not going to run as good as Hoffman would. Why is it that he, and this has been the knock on Hoffman in the modified community. It's, I'm, up, I'm up here around the, the USMTS areas too. Um the one knock on Nick Hoffman is if he's so damn good, why won't he come to a USMT or MTS race? And I've heard several. I've good. heard several I, I, reasons. I, I, I that. Well, he did go late mile racing. I do feel like modifieds are Xfinity, even on a USMTS level, if there's a late model to race. Does that make sense? Modifieds are so much harder to drive than late models. I mean, yes. I mean, but then you see the modified guys get a chance in late models and not always really shine. I mean, Kyle Strickler was dominant in UMP modifieds. And, yeah, he's okay in a late model, but he ain't, like, he ain't doing nothing super special. He's he's a top 10 guy, but that ain't nothing special. And and I agree, it's, it, it sounds like 8 inches on that much power would produce a better or, or a harder vehicle to drive, but then you should be able to get into a late model and outperform late model drivers if it's so much harder. I've, I've always thought about that. I don't really don't know why. I mean, Hoffman did okay. He didn't do nothing special, though. Just did okay. You know? So, I don't know. I, I, do, I do think, though, that even in the fendered world, that modifieds are viewed as a class below late models no matter what a hundred percent yeah so i mean i don't i don't know what to do to fix that because you know you look at some of the top performing modified rides and they're going to be just as expensive as a late model if you want to be up front yeah, I mean, you know there's just there's not enough attention there's not enough you know area yeah. for a modified really Perform. There's not a World of Outlaw series for a modified. There's not a Lucas Oil series for the modified. But it, the, it just, I, I was just going to say the other thing that there isn't for a modified is a class. Like late models. If you if, if you go like the, the term super late models, you could go watch super late models almost everywhere. But modifieds, it's like we just got through talking about. It's IMCA, UMP, I, uh, you know. There isn't a class for the top level of of modified racing to even unify a fan base or the drivers. Which, I mean, there's A mods, B mods, and stuff like that. Which B mods are just you know underpowered modified. But then an A mod is you know a IMCA modified is considered an A mod, but it's in a crate car. It, it's IMCA modified racing is crate racing. So. You know, in late model world, if you're in a crate motor, you're in a 604, you know. You're not running. It's not a super. So, I, yeah, I, 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 think, I think it's because the modifieds haven't unified a class. or and, and since they haven't unified a class, they can't unify the fan bases or the drivers. And it's just overall killing it. Um, yeah, you're, I agree with you. And, and you are going to shift, I hear now, and you're going to run... Sprint cars. You're switching out of the late models, correct? No, 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 no. no. We can my, maybe my, get you in my, a sprint car. We could get you in sprint cars. I mean, we're close my, to... My, my, my dream still is a World of Outlaws or Lucas Oil super late model ride. A full, full ride. I mean, but there ain't no opportunity over there for, for y'all. Well, I'm just kidding. But I'm just trying to sell this. We could get you in some sprint car stuff. I, I'm not real interested in sprint car. I mean, I'm, I'm interested in, you know, the, the micros and midgets, but just the sprint car stuff, I just don't think it's for me. Why? Is it too fast? It's just, it's just not my, you know, is it, is it the danger? It looks fun. And, and just, I've never really, it's never really struck my eye. It's something I really wanted to do. Have you done it, it on the like, iRacing? Like, I, I've done it a lot on iRacing. It, it's like, you look at a plumber and it's like, you know, I can get you a job with a plumber. You know, you we, you can be a plumber. Do you want to be a plumber? No, not really. 
But it's the same thing. It's dirt in a circle. Yeah. Why do you think that that split is there so much? I, I say it all the time. If we could unify the fender crowd and the open wheel crowd, we'd have the biggest fan base in the world. Why is it even there? It's the same thing. It, it's wild that it's the same thing, but it's a different concept. Is it? What's the different concept? I mean, you could be banging a sprint car, kind of, a little bit. Not a lot, but... It, I mean, it, I get it. It is very... It, the racing style is NASCAR to Indy cars. It's very similar in those two comparisons. I mean, one's a little bit more in a pack and side-by-side side like NASCAR. And then sprint cars are like Indy cars. It's more so about getting runs and, and, and making you know quick kind of maneuvers and passes. And it's not necessarily all bunched up together. So I, I get it. But it's still on a dirt oval and we're still turning right to go left. I mean, everybody's in the chat right now battling late miles versus sprint cars. Why can't we be like the NHRA where you have top fuel and funny car? I mean, I don't understand what I had to battle at all. Sprint cars and late models are still two great positions in this sport. But there's always been a traditional battle between the two. Fan bases, drivers, you know, they're always talking shit. Yeah, but it's just it's one of those deals. Sprint cars are... You know, it, they're the own, they're their own creature, and late models are, you know, just their own deal. So you would reject a, a, a test in a four ten wing sprint car? I don't think I'd reject a test. I'd, I'd like to, you know, start off in something smaller, like a three oh five, and work my way up. But I just I don't know. Just just, just for the the equipment sake, you know, uh, the three oh five would start me off like I started in a you know a crate car. Well, yeah, uh, but those, those well, the sprint cars, I, I think you would learn bad habits in a 305, though. That's why they tell people not to run 305s. It just gave me a, you know, familiar experience in a sprint car because I've never, I just don't run sprint cars. Well, and they're very touchy on the wheel, you know, so, uh, yeah. and they are, they look very dangerous. They look dangerous, although apparently not more dangerous than a truck at Knoxville. That blows my mind. Still blows my yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we can let you go. It is. A, it's probably past your bedtime. Um, ah, bedtime. Um, I'm homeschooled, but yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's, it's getting pretty late, but yeah. I mean, I, I appreciate you letting me come on and you know, uh, sell my side of the story to you, and you know, kind of a uh, get a little bit further into this deal that we, you know, we've been battling about the past few days on uh, social media. Well, I mean, it's it's. I definitely think that. You know, I kind of halfway wanted this to be able to happen just also for, like I said, I know the sport. I didn't know you. All I got to know about you was that example, you know, so to, to be able to. That's, that's, why, that, that's why I got all here, so you could figure out the real person that I am. Well, yeah, well, I'm just saying I hope in the same aspect that, you know, anybody who has been introduced to you in the same way, because I'm assuming you're, you're making it sound like a lot of people were introduced to you in the same way. Um, and, and this is how they, they got to learn your name or hear your name. And that's how they got, they got to, to hear about you. And maybe they had similar notions. So at least now, uh, those, those questions can be answered as well. Not just for me, but for your image in the sport, you know, that's a big deal. I mean, I, like I said, you could, you could be catch me outside girl. I don't think that's good. You know, she's very famous, but I don't want to, I, I wouldn't want to be her. You know I mean? I'm just saying, I, I, I don't, I don't think you want to be either. So. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't want to be the UK Parker kid my whole life. I, would, I, I mean, I want to be Charlie Mefford. And I mean, I think that's just a start to Charlie Mefford. Okay. Well, the door is open. I guess the door on this one is closed. Any sponsors you want to uh, give a shout out to? Any people you know watching? I, I don't really know anybody watching, but yeah, I like to give out a shout out. You know, of course, my mom and dad. You know, they do a lot for me. Uh, Oakley, you know, builds my motors. Nick, you know, builds some of the best race cars I ever drove. Uh, Scotty Owens with Owens Construction, Quality Towing, J and J Pumping, Turner Services, Race Ranch, Windy Hollow, uh, Western Kentucky Speedway, uh, Cedar Ridge Speedway, uh, Dick City, Owensboro Health. Uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, a few of my new sponsors, uh, Joseph Thomas Racing. Um, uh, let me think. 
uh, the the scooter brand the, from the dome. I, I really can't think of their name. <laughs> Bro Max, <laughs> wrong one. <laughs> yeah, wrong one. Uh, it's on the tip. It's on the. The guys who sold house. the damn scooters that you know uh, helped me get my car off the track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- those guys. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, I mean, just just people that really reached out to me and bought a shirt and uh, you know came up and just really you know took pictures with me. I mean, they're, they're, they're the reason I really like this sport and reason why we're going to keep going. And it, it really means the world to me. You know, anybody that comes up and takes a picture, you know, I'm never going to back anybody down. You know, I might not have time, but I will say come back later. I really. I really, really appreciate everybody that, you know, comes up and all those people that, you know, put their time and effort in on me. Yeah, definitely. I feel I feel the same way sometimes, you know. It's, it's you know, I, I was a person that came into some fame as well. And it, it, it when you come from kind of nothing, which it sounds like what you're saying, and then you were trying to make your, your splash here, when you make that come from nothing and, and people all of a sudden want to see you and say hi, it means a lot. You don't want to, you don't want to, you know, lose your roots on that. So it's good to know that you uh, haven't lost lost the roots in appreciating the regular folk from liking you. That's a big deal as well. So I think I think some people, I even heard one sponsor making comments on a bigger driver on how he got too big for him. You know, he used to be like that, where he would appreciate people and talk to you. But now he's got big, he's got used to that, so now he doesn't appreciate it as much. You know, and I think that's a hard aspect that some drivers get into and they they slowly forget to really appreciate people who like them. You know, no matter how much of the like you get. So, uh, that that's good to know. I'm never going to forget the people that got me here. Like, all my friends are always, they, they, they've been texting me the past few days. Don't forgive me, you know, since you're famous and everything. Like, you, you was part of the journey. Heck, you're just as famous as I am. Right, right. Yeah, I'll tell you something that was very funny. Uh, I believe in, in God or a God or a universe or something extremely. I believe in listening to signs and things that are very interesting. And my girlfriend will testify to this. So... Where I'm at, I had uh, raked all the leaves and placed them in one spot outside in the front yard. This was a couple weeks ago. Waiting for the people to come and remove the leaves. Okay? So, I parked my car right there in front of the leaves. I'm waiting for somebody to say, move it. Or if I'm gone, while they they pick it up. Whatever. And all of a sudden, the day before I'm supposed to leave to the dome, there is a police order sign. That says no parking temporary police order stuck right next to my car in front of the leaves. Now, I didn't know at the time, like, I can't park there. What's going on? And and I went, I'm telling you, this was last Thursday, bro. Can't park there. I was, I was literally, I went to the girl. I was like, it's like, I don't know what this sign I was telling her. I was like, I don't know. Cause I take signs very literal. I was like, I don't know what this sign means, bro. But it's saying I can't park her. I don't know if I'm supposed to move or what, you know, I took it very spiritually. And then, exactly, 24 hours later, after this whole situation went down about me not being able to park there, this motherfucking shit happens with this punk-ass kid junking a car making fun of it. I can't believe it. But anyways, yes, that's what that was the sign. You can't park there. I got that last Thursday. Last Thursday, right here. Come on, Chaz. Give, give me a 3-2-1. Three, 3-2-1. Two, one. Three, two, one. You can't Just park there. There it is. <laughs> I, I, I can't scream it. I can't scream. You, you, you can't park there. I can't do it. Yeah, at least you said it. At least you said it. But the, the the God said it to me last Thursday, and then you came to reality. So that's what happens. Manifestations. Yeah, there there it is. You you got the you can't park there out of the way. Oh my God, you can't park there. I, I can't wait to see. Uh, your 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 eye racing ride for this one on one match that we're gonna broadcast live. Oh yeah, I'm gonna, have to have, uh, uh, I'm gonna have to have one of my buddies make me a rap. Oh yeah, I yeah, can... but here, give it to me. I need I need to figure out when this is. We got to do something. I think that could be good. We could promote a pretty big race. I could get David Gravel in there, get a couple people in there that that race, get some names in there. We could have a pretty big race. Tim Sims is a big supporter of mine. I don't know if you know who that is, but uh. No. He does a lot of the simulators. I don't know if you've seen all the simulators lined up at Chili Bowl uh, with all the half-cut sprint car chassis. That's his. Oh, was he at the dome? 
Yes, he was at the Dome, yes. Ah, yep, 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 yep. yep. Okay. That's Tim Sims, and I have a pretty good affiliation with him, so we could make a pretty big iRacing event out of this. We really could. I, what are we What are we going to run? Sprint cars, late models? We could do we could do an international race of champions and do one track at each in each class and do a point still all in one night, or four we can do that, yeah. four four days, the fastest four days in uh, semi sports, or something. The you fastest know? four the fastest four days. There you they, go. Uh, one night they, in a uh, modified, one night in a wing sprint car, one night in a late mall, and one night in a street stock. Oh, street stock. That's my stuff right there. I like it. I don't know. I think I could whoop your ass in the street stock. I think you're underestimating me. Easy, easy. You're easy, underestimating easy. me. You're really I right. am. I I like I like your street cars. Chase Chase Briscoe called me the Steve Kinzer of online racing at one point. But that was our fact. This is our racing. I'm a fa- I hate to admit this, but I am a founding member of iRacing. Why do you hate to admit it? I, because it sounds horrible. Founding member. The fucking thing came out in 2008. Although I don't race it a lot. That's my problem. I'm good, but I just don't stick to it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, is it going to be open, set up, fixed, set up? I think fixed is the only way to do it, to find out who the best driver is. Oh, nah, we got to have open set up. I got to support fixed my sponsors. Fixed is the only way. I got to support my sponsors. I gotta your support sponsors them. can kiss your ass. They They, they can't park there. They're gonna park there. We're gonna park it in Victor This is the this is the you can't park there invitational fixed so that the drivers can shine. Oh, drivers. Yes. Who? We're gonna get some names. I'm sure we could get Chris Ferguson in on this. I'm sure we could get a bunch yeah, of names I'll in on this. Yeah, I'll get Fergie in on. I'll get, get Fergie. We'll get Ferguson. I'll get shots to fire his shit up. We'll get we'll get some names in there. We'll make this the biggest damn I race there is. Yeah, this is gonna be good. See, the, the, the worst part about it, my internet's not that great. My computer's not that great. So I'll get in there and I'll just lag. Well, maybe we may. Me and you may have to be announcers. I don't know, but um, that yeah, there it is. Yeah, and nope. then we can do like a one-on-one deal. Well, we can argue the entire time. Yeah, the fastest four days in our racing of it in our racing history. Right, right. When you get too carried away in the broadcast booth, I could be like, "Calm down. You already got your fame." Calm down. Yeah. Yep. This could be this could be a good deal. It really could. could be a good deal. Somebody said fix setups hold you back. No, they don't. No, no. Yes, they they do. They do hold you back. They hold back the people who need a setup to be fast. I can be fast either way. I just think you know set up you know show off the the crew chief and the guy. The crew chief and the guy. Oh my god. Trent Ivy said it best. I racing's a hundred percent setup. Real racing is twenty percent. Equipment eighty percent set up. So exactly. So I mean, if I race a hundred percent set up, let's use it. Oh my god! For an advantage. <laughs> Disgusting. There, you just said it right there. Disgusting. I am here in Tennessee. Where are y'all at? I am in Iowa, and I believe he is in Kentucky. So, anyways, uh, all right. I guess we'll let you go. I don't think there's any more fan questions, but uh, I guess thanks for tuning in. I didn't see this coming, really. But uh, things happen, so. Things do happen. The universe always delivers. I, I hope. I hope the universe delivers. I, as Bloomer says. Well, and now, and now I have your number so I could start shopping you for uh, midget and chili bow rides. Yeah, phone's always up. I'm pretty successful on shopping talent and dirt racing. Hey, I, I, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm up for the challenge of the micro. All right. All right, we'll see how it works. Uh, thanks for thanks for calling. I, it, thanks everybody else for tuning in. I guess we'll get out of here, um, and uh, we'll catch you next time. I'll be sure to cut this up and uh, put out some different uh, clips throughout that uh, me and Charlie uh, hit on there, and even with Spike. Two hours and fifty four minutes. Three hours have went by. Wow, it is late. Thanks for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. We will catch you next time here on Long Live the Chaz. That was Charlie Mefford and Spike Fast Racing. We will catch you next time. This is how we ride. This is how we do. I must up.